House Targaryen, the late king's eldest son and heir, the current king on the Iron Throne, has already had a huge impact upon the realm. He has brought the Dornish into Targaryen rule and has overall brought much prosperity to the realm. However, in allowing Dornishmen into the royal court and breaking promises made by the dead king, he's insisted many laws of his foreign antics. While he may be king, he is no warrior in any shape or form. He has recently made the very wise decision to leave the loyalist forces under the command of his half-brother who is known by the small folk and his men alike as Blood Raven. Having rallied the Crown Lands, Dawn, and the Reach to defend his crown, the king is still in a very desperate position, with Blackfire's numbers growing by the moment. Will this Targaryen king be able to hold onto the crown his ancestors fought so deadly and bravely to obtain? Or will the Black Dragon usurp the Red? The fate of House Targaryen hangs in the balance. The future will be determined by the small lords. Stark, Lannister, Tully, Aaron, all stand neutral. Many of the noble lords of Westeros have yet to pick a side, yet to choose red or black. It is their choices that will determine the fate of this civil war. House Blackfire was founded 12 years ago, when on his deathbed the late King Aemon legitimized all of his bastards. One of the late King's son decided to adopt the name Blackfire after the fabled sword which was gifted to him by his father. Lord Blackfire has recently decided, at the urge of many noblemen and due to the past grievances with his brother on the Iron Throne, to press his claim to the Iron Throne himself. The premise being that his brother, the current King on the Iron Throne, is in truth not his father's son, but rather that of the Aemon the Dragon Knight and the Queen, which rumour gives much evidence towards. Blackfire's popularity has won him much support throughout the realm, with many noble houses and great knights swearing their swords to him and his sons. Riding to Harren Hall to gather his forces and plan his strategies, Lord Blackfriars' numbers grow with each passing day, with the seeds of rebellion growing in every kingdom. Blackfriars crowned himself the King of the Iron Throne, the King who bore the sword. This sword is a symbol of his legitimacy, that his father indeed gave him the right to be the true heir. A secret pact, if you will, that many of the lords of the land believe gives him more right to the Iron Throne than his brother ever had. With this Blade of Kings, Blackfire hopes to retake what is his by right. A legendary blade of House Targaryen, Blackfire was last wielded by Aegon the Conqueror when he first landed in Westeros with his dragons and his two sister wives. Now, with the fires of rebellion spreading, this would-be king must gain the allegiance of the noble houses of Westeros, to have them join his cause. While many of the lords of the land have already sworn allegiance to House Blackfire, seeing him as the true king, many still doubt this, preferring to wait by their time and make sure that the king they choose is the right one. Because in the Dance of Dragons, if you're on the losing side, when you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. House Stark. The blood of the first men runs fiercely through the veins of these folks of the north. Direct descendants of the original Kings of Winter. Descended from Brandon the Builder, the architect of not only Winterfell but the Wall as well. With the realm and the state that it is, the Wildlings have taken this opportunity to scale the Wall, bypass the Night's Watch, and invade the north, pillaging and looting as they go. The Umbers of Last Hearth have sent word to Winterfell, and the Starks march to the Wall itself to destroy these wildlings before they can get any further into the south. While the lords in the south fight among themselves, House Stark must do its duty and protect the whole of the realm from a wildling invasion. House Tully. The Tullys have a long history of going against the grain. Their rise to prominence was a direct result of the invasion led by Aegon the Conqueror and the defeat of King Harren of the Iron Islands. The Tullys were the first lords of the Trigent to rebel, and thus were rewarded by being named Lord Paramount of the Trident. House Lannister. The Lannisters are an ancient house. They have descended from the Andals. They claim their descendants through Lan the Clever, a legend from the Age of Heroes. Word has reached the Westerlands of the chaos throughout the realm, and the possible rebellion of the dragons. But this is far from the first time the Lannisters have been caught up in a dance of dragons. They know the consequences of picking the wrong side. The last time the Lannisters marched against House Targaryen was on the Field of Fire. That saw the end of thousands of their troops, the death of the King of the Reach. House Lannister was only saved because their king bent the knee. 
Without a doubt, House Lannister will turn to their borders, secure their castles, and wait. Wait for the opportune moment to pick a side, when victory is assured, and there is little to no risk of defeat. House Aaron, with news reaching the Skyward Fortress, the area of rebellion throughout the realm, Lord Aaron has summoned all of his banners in the Vale to him. Although, it is said that some of his lords have struck up the banner of the Black Dragon of Blackfire upon their battle standards instead. House Aaron is in a perilous position. This is not to say the house is weak, by any means. With a strategically placed castle in the area and some of the hardiest warriors and generals in the Seven Kingdoms, House Aaron is far from a pushover. House Greyjoy. What is dead may never die, but rises again harder and stronger. Holy words. True words. Words that the Ironborn are sure testament to. They have been lying in wait for many years now, waiting for the chance to rise once more. That opportunity has now shown itself in the shape of war. A war that they are more than ready for. The Iron Fleet has set sail once again, with the intent to take back former Ironborn glory, to return to the old ways. Loot, plunder, rape, pillage. What is dead may never die. House Tyrell. House Tyrell is one of the original and most renowned houses in the Seven Kingdoms, as well as one of the bastions of chivalry. Going back to the days of Harlan Tyrell, the steward of the Reach, this house can proudly track their accomplishments. Harlan Tyrell was granted Highgarden and Lordship of the Houses of the Reach after King Mern was burned alive with his host on the Field of Fire by Aegon the Conqueror. Since that day, the Lords of Highgarden have always been loyal to House Targaryen. House Baratheon. After the death of King Aemon, Lord Bruce slowly watched as the realm turned to chaos, knowing that dire things would come from both dragons. He left his council position in King's Landing with his sons and returned to Storm's End, wishing no part in the conflict. As news reaches him of rebellion, he knows he may soon need to take sides. With the full might of the Stormlands behind him, Lord Bruce has assembled a mighty force, with more than the competent of generals and the legendary Storm's End to call home. This lord can take his time choosing sides. Watching his sons grow into men is his only wish. However, he's a man of duty, and he will not stand by as the realm tears itself apart. House Martell. The exact origins of House Martell is lost to the histories, though it is known that Lord Morris Martell married the legendary Queen of the Ruin, Numeria. After their union, their full surname was changed to Numerous Martell. Together, they united Dawn under their rule, and House Martell has ruled for a thousand years. Differing from the other houses of Seven Kingdoms, the Dornishmen recognized the right of women to rule as well as men. The Dornish battered off several Targaryen invasion attempts, before finally submitting to Targaryen rule, but only through marriage, thus generating that the blood of kings as well as princes would run through the veins of the Martell line. Okay then, we'll end this here. I hope the lore and the story behind all of these factions was enough to get you guys to go out and give this mod a try. As with all of my reviews, any footage that you see in this video can be found on my personal channel through many playthroughs that I've probably already done for the mod. Any and all necessary links to get to this mod will be found under the video in the description, along with a link to my personal channel if you'd like to watch any of the playthroughs that I've already done on this sub mod. Overall, while this is not the most polished mod and still needs quite a bit of work, it is still very much enjoyable. I had quite a few good fun hours playing it myself. I do believe my Blackfire playthrough reached about 20 parts, so that's almost 10 hours or so of footage. I had some great battles and great times playing with this submod, even if it does need some touching up in places. I'd still recommend giving it a try. It is one of two submods that allow you to play as House Targaryen, and despite its flaws, it is still very enjoyable. I hope all of this information was at least enough for you guys to go try it out. I'll leave you to decide whether or not it's for you. Don't forget to like, thumbs up, and subscribe. That's all for now. Soul out. Enter the game level.